So over the past week, I've been using an enclosure docking station for my M4 Pro Mac Mini, and I can easily say this one beats the competition by far. It gives you a bunch of ports, memory card slot, NVMe SSD slots, has really good build quality, and all of that for a very surprising price tag, which I think is gonna to appeal to a lot of you out there. So let's talk about it in this video. The box is pretty simple. Now, this is the box I got mine in. It might be a pre-production model. So the box you get at home may be a little bit different, but generally this is what it's gonna look like. Inside the box, we actually get a, of course, the docking station. And then we also get this little box as well. And let me show you what you get inside. So you do get a Torx screwdriver. We get a normal screwdriver. We get a Thunderbolt 4 USB-C to USB-C cable a power plug, which I'll explain why in a minute. You get some thermal pads, which they are quite thick, and you do get four of them, as well as these rubber type of screw things that are used for the NVMe drives to put them in place and keep them secure. Then we get a USB-C to USB-C cable for that power adapter. Essentially, the power adapter goes into the back of the hub at the bottom, if for some reason you need extra power going to the machine, I haven't experienced that I need extra power going to the machine, but if you do need to, that's what that's for. Otherwise, you don't need to use that connection at all. You can just use the host to the M4 Mac Mini and it should all be able to get powered from the M4 Mac Mini. And then you get a little guide which shows you stuff you get inside, how to install the NVMEs and stuff, which I'm gonna show you. And then also it shows you how you can get the NVMe SSDs into RAID 0 configuration if you want them faster speeds. Right, so here we have the actual Acasis docking station. Now, in order to place the M4 Mac Mini inside, they do say to unscrew the bottom screws where the legs are, and then you can slide it in that way. So now that the screws are undone, you can literally pull the bottom section off, and that will show you the opening for the M4 Mac Mini. And placement for the M4 Mac Mini, super simple, because the power button is at the top section here, all you're gonna do when you turn your Mac Mini, make sure the power button is at that top section as well, and slide it up there, and that's it. Now the Mac Mini is in there, you've got all your ports on the back, and your ports on the front. Yours might look a little bit different because my Mac Mini has a skin on it, so that's why it doesn't match up to the color of the actual docking station, but otherwise I think the color should match, so it should look like one device, and that should look pretty sleek. Now on the front, we have the USB-A ports. Now, I've mentioned before, I'm not a fan of USB-A ports. However, I do like that they've made it 10 gigabit ports instead of the standard five. So you, at least if you want the USB-A ports on the front, you'll have the faster ports to use. There's a button on the front to turn the hub on and then you get a notification LED type of light there. So you will know if you're gonna use these or not, you've got the button on the front to activate it. On the back, you do have the host port, which is gonna to connect to one of the Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back of my M4 Pro Mac Mini. Then you have a display port, or you have two display ports on there, and then that power delivery port if you do need extra power for some reason, which I can't imagine why you'd need it. Then you have all your ports, of course, on your M4 Mac Mini. On the top, we have the memory card slot and the micro SD card slot, which they seem to be decently fast. We can always do a speed test, see how fast it transfers a file to the memory card on there. But the SD 4.0 and the TF 4.0 are more than good enough. So the next thing we're gonna do is unscrew this section and place the NVMe SSD in there. And I'll show you how to do that. So this one is using the other screwdriver. You've got one screw. Once you take that screw out, you'll see that it actually unveils the two NVMe SSD slots there. And then you can use different sizes of NVMe SSDs. That's what the different holes are for. If you don't have the original 2280 ones, you can use the smaller size ones and then attach them to there. So for the NVMe SSD, something you have to take into account is the ones with the heat sink on there. I think some of the Samsung ones may fit. I mean, depends on how thick the actual NVMe is. If you look at this one, how much space you have, this is the Oracle one. You don't get much space on this side, 
but on this side it should be pretty fine so depending on how wide how much wider the heatsink makes the NVMe that will be dependent factor on if it's going to fit inside the actual hub or not and then we've got the rubber little grommets like I showed you these essentially let me unplug this essentially you can see they've got slits in them let me show you there and then that slit is just going to slide into that like that and then it pushes into the hole there and it makes sure that your NVMe is nice and secure so just like that and then we push it down and now it's in place perfectly fine you've got this little grill on this side which looks pretty nice that's where the fan is so you're going to get that good airflow coming out the side now you've got access to your power button which is very easy to press if you look for reaching for the power button quite often and then on the top we have the memory card slots now let's connect the host so we need to get that Thunderbolt 4 cable take the ends off and then you're going to connect this top port where it says host and connect it to any of the ports on there I'm just going to use the top one because why not on the front you do have three USB-A ports now these ports are the faster 10 gigabit connection ports so you should get faster data transfer speeds instead of the standard five that we see on many hubs these days now if you're like me and you don't use USB-A that much I can't remember the last time I uh, plugged in a USB-A cable it's usually all USB-C these days for me you probably won't use them that much but if you do use USB-A and I have seen the people out there that do use USB-A in the comments box below then that'll be happy days for you you can start using more ports on the front if you do use USB-C you can still use them all you need to do is go on Amazon get yourself a USB-A to USB-C converter there's small things like that they plug into the USB-A and then you can plug in USB-C cable into the other end and take advantage that way but don't forget you still have them two USB connections USB-C connections on the front of your M4 Mac Mini something to keep in mind with the docking station is I showed you it has two NVMe SSD slots in there now what you have to know is when those two NVMe SSD slots are working together you get the full Thunderbolt for 40 gigabit speed so you're going to need two SSDs put them in the slots format them to RAID 0 configuration then in Mac OS they'll be seen as one drive that's where you get the full 40 gigabit speeds of anywhere between 3300 3700 megabytes depending on what NVMe's you put in there now you can support up to 16 terabytes of storage if you do want to go that extreme I know that's going to cost a fortune if you only have one NVMe and you plan to put it in the actual docking station you're only going to get half of that 40 gigabit connection because you're only using one slot so if you're wondering why you're only getting between 1300 1500 megabyte speeds on speed tests that's going to be why now them speeds are still pretty fast 1300 1500 but if you want to take advantage of the full Thunderbolt 4 you're going to need to get two NVMe's put them in there and format them to RAID 0 configuration and that will get you the perfect combination of speeds and yeah so now that we've got everything plugged in booted up something you need to remember is if your memory card slots at the top are not working or the ports at the front are not working or you're not being able to see your NVMe SSD on the actual system you may have just forgotten to press the button to turn the hub on at the top once you press that button the light will come on all the ports should work and then your NVMe SSD should pop up in the system OS as well just like my one has now something I wanted to go through first like I just spoke to you about the two NVMe slots on there let's do a Blackmagic disk speed test and for a reference let's do the speed of the internal drive of the M4 Pro Mac Mini this is the 512 gigabyte version just to get a baseline now the speeds on these M4 Mac Minis are very fast as you can see the write is around 4000 and then the read is around 51 almost 50 so you are getting very fast speeds and these are more well these are closer to around Thunderbolt 5 speeds that you'd get and now if we take for reference the actual built-in well not the built-in but the Orico NVMe that I have in there like I mentioned I only have one NVMe in there so it's only going to run at the half speed which is going to be that 20 gigabit connection so generally what we see on here should be half of what we're going to see if we had two drives in there running at RAID 0 so let's see what speeds we get in there so for the write we're seeing around 1350 and for the read we're seeing around 1550 so generally we if we had it in RAID 0 
we'd see close to around 27, 2800 on the right and over 3000 on the read, which would be perfectly fine. On the back of the Acasis docking station, you will get two DisplayPort 1.3 connections, which allows you to connect one 4K display at 144 Hertz or two 4K displays at 60 Hertz. Something to bear in mind though, is if you're taking advantage of that RAID 0 system for the NVMe drives, and you do decide to use two monitors with the display ports on the back, you are gonna see a slight slowdown in them speeds. And I'll show you an infographic here on the screen just to explain the kind of slowdown you might see. Now, if you're just using one NVMe drive in the actual docking station on its own, you won't see any slowdown at all. Now we've got an SD card in the top. We've got the NVMe plugged in, of course, in the side. So power is definitely being used. So if there is any Wi-Fi interruption, it definitely should be visible now. And then on Google, we've got this internet speed test one. So well, let's run the speed test and see what happens. Usually we get around 450, 500 on the Wi-Fi download, sometimes a little bit more, but let's see if this causes any interruption. So run test, and now we're seeing 370, 380, 390. So 393 on the first test on the download, which is very good considering other things we've connected to the M4 Mac Mini previously have brought it down by a half, down in the 200s. So 393 is not a worry at all. 37.8 on the upload, usually we see around, what, 60, 65. So that has taken a bit of a hit, but nothing major. These numbers are probably why I haven't noticed any speed drops, because to be honest, at this speed, you really wouldn't notice any difference too if it was 500 meg on the download. So yeah, let's run it one more time just to be sure. Test again, and then we'll know. Obviously, if you have Ethernet cable, you connect Ethernet to the M4 Mac Mini, you won't have any issues at all. But look, second test, 445 on the Wi-Fi download and 40 on the upload. So definitely I'd say when it comes to Wi-Fi and using this docking station, you should have no issues whatsoever. Seems to be pretty good. You get maybe a 10, 15% drop as opposed to have nothing connected. But as we all know from previous experience, whatever you connect to the M4 Meg Mini seems to drop the Wi-Fi by a little bit. So Acasis seems to have done quite a good job at the minute. And something I do like is that they put the SD card slot on the top of the actual docking station instead of the side or the front, because usually when companies put them on the side or the front, I find that when I put the SD card in, sometimes it can push the dock out of alignment, just move it in general. I know it's first world problems, but having it on the top just makes it nice and convenient to pop the card in, take the card out and be very easy. And as well as that, the readers on these memory cards in the actual docking station are actually pretty fast. I think they were UHS-2, so you get around 312 megabytes per second speeds, which is gonna be fast enough to transfer any files you need, especially from a camera. I haven't had any issues. If you're looking for these professional grade memory card readers that send files super fast, obviously, they cost more on their own than this whole docking station does. So you're probably gonna invest in one of them anyway, and then just connect it to one of the ports on the front or on the back of your M4 Mac Mini. And these, points, these ports won't really matter to you. So yeah, take that into consideration. I think for the majority of people out there, these ports on the top of the SD card are gonna be perfectly fine and transfer files much faster than you even need. So that was the Acasis TB1201 docking station for the M4 Mac Mini and the M4 Pro Mac Mini. Now, I really think this is a really great product and they've done such a good job for the first iteration. Is it perfect? No, there is some stuff that could be fixed, improved. But being the first iteration and the price point that they put it out, I think it's a really solid option for anyone looking for a dock attached to the M4 Mac Mini in one solid option with them memory card slots at the top, which is usually something that's missing on these. Now, if you wanna to go to the Kickstarter link in the description box and the comments box below, you can, of course, if you get there fast enough, get that early bird pricing. But even at that recommended retail pricing, well, I think $159, it's a solid option. I would love to see what the next ones they're gonna come out with. If they would include Thunderbolt 5 speeds on the NVMe SSD, that would be really good. Right now, only having that Thunderbolt 4 and then it being split by two, so to get that faster speed, you need to have them in RAID 0. It's kind of a bit disappointing, but even so, when they're in single slot mode, you still get a fair amount of speed on there. So next iteration, I think it's gonna be really good, but so far, really, really good job. And I think this is something I'm gonna be using for my M4 Mac Mini. Let me know if this is something you're gonna get, if you feel like it's good. If you've got any questions about it, let me know in the comments box below. And yeah, if I did own your subscription, remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, share it with your friends and family to get the video pushed out in the algorithm and to more people, because that's always a good thing. I appreciate your support, I appreciate your watching, and I will catch you on the next one.